Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Tyrone back with Tech Life. And before I get this video started, I just want to say I hope you guys had a good Thanksgiving, got to spend it with family. I did. That's why I didn't make a video these past few days. But again, behind the scenes, I was researching and studying a bit more. A lot of it I already knew. But in today's video, I want to talk about the diff what the difference is between AT&T's 5G launch on the sub 6 gigahertz and T-Mobile's 5G launch on the sub 6 gigahertz. The big difference right now early on, of course, is T-Mobile plans to launch this nationwide, according to what they're saying, on 200 million pops. AT&T is not doing so. AT&T is launching this on the market per market basis. That's why you saw in my video where I displayed the coverage maps, which are now out uh, live from AT&T. You can see they are only launching the sub six gigahertz 5G in certain markets. I don't know all of them off the top of my head currently, but I know one of them is Boston. Then we got Las Vegas and we got San Diego. As, as some of you know, if you watch my videos, I was uh, recently in San Diego on the trip. The market is really, really um, good for AT&T in terms of density, and then the, the whole market is 100% 5GE. I know that's fake 5G, but that means that the market is upgraded and the towers got additional backhaul, backhaul and additional support to support higher throughput. So that's the one major difference that T-Mobile plans on doing it on 200 million pops of LTE. AT&T currently is still launching this at a market per market basis. For one, they don't have nationwide 850 megahertz, which is band five. And the other, I just don't think it was a top, top priority like what um, what uh, T-Mobile did. When T-Mobile changed their strategy in terms of they want to launch 5G using the low band, they completely um, used most of their capital investment on getting the 600 panels up on new cell sites that already had low band in, in most markets. That's why the rollout was so fast and you saw so many cities because it wasn't the new and it wasn't new coverage that they gained or a bigger expansion, although they did do some, but it was mainly adding 600 megahertz panels onto existing sites that already had low band in band 12. That's why it was so fast. So that's where they allocated most of their capital investment to do so. AT&T did do that as well, but they were mainly focused on getting the band 14 up on the cell sites and, and getting that accomplished and hitting those milestones over just getting the, you know, the uh, uh, 5G on the sub six gigahertz. Although we are going to start seeing it more and more frequent from AT&T. T-Mobile will have the uh, initially will have the more broader 5G coverage if if you consider that being a generational performance leap. Um, of course, that, that that's up to your discretion and opinion. In my opinion, I'm going to tell you it's not going to be a it's not going to be a generational leap in speeds. And here's another difference. T-Mobile in their marketing they are addressing 600 and 5G. I don't know if you guys saw that video. I will link it in the description down below. They are marketing it as something that's never been seen before, that it's going to bring all these great new capabilities. The only thing that is true about that, that they are the first and only carrier that's using 600 megahertz on that type of scale. And they had to develop the software and all that good stuff. But it performing just, you know, miraculously better than LTE that's a no-go. AT&T was the very first one to roll that out in their um, press conference. They are saying that their sub-6 gigahertz 5G is going to perform very similar to their LTE Advanced uh, and what we're seeing in 5GE. T-Mobile has not came out and, 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 and disclosed that in any of their marketing or any of their any of their statements. So just be prepared. If you are going to get a T-Mobile 5G phone, be prepared for it to perform very similar to your LTE advanced experience that you've been experiencing for a um, for this whole time now. And also in the video that you will see, if you haven't seen it already, the cell side that is being displayed 
already has low bend on it in band 12. So in that video, they are taking that skinnier panel off and they're putting the, the bigger panel, which supports band 71. The frequency difference is not that, not that huge. So the 700 megahertz and the 600 megahertz presents virtually the same coverage. It's 600 gives it about a 5 to 10% increase, which on the consumer end really won't be noticed. So I just wanted to point that out. Again, I'm not bashing T-Mobile. It's just their, their, their marketing and, and what they say and the choice of words is just so blatant that I just want to, you know, give you guys a correction in, in terms of uh, people emailing me saying, look, I've gotten these, uh, my name, uh, my city has been on this list uh, on, on low band upgrades, but yet I noticed no improvement in, in my performance or experience. And I have to tell because it is the same, you know, it's pretty much the same experience you're getting. You're not gaining a huge amount of spectrum. You know, although that is another difference, T-Mobile does have more low band uh, uh, spectrum on the uh, band 71 than most of the other carriers. So that's another difference in performance over the 850 than the, the 600 megahertz that T-Mobile is using. But they are initially splitting that with LTE from what they have said before the, the use of the DSS technology. So it, it's kind of a toss up because AT&T is turning off the uh, the 850 megahertz for LTE as they are allocating that entire slice to 5G. So, you know, there are some differences here and there, but you won't notice a drastic improvement over today's LTE experience with T-Mobile. Whether that is performance on speed or a coverage gain, it's not going to be that incremental to where, to where you're like, oh man, this is a huge difference. If you're in the building with band 12 now and you're noticing one to two bars, you're still you know you're still in theory going to see the same bars but if they do dedicate more spectrum and you have that whole 20 megahertz slice of, of of low band on the 600 megahertz you may see a difference in speed but it's going to be nothing close to the generational leap that we are going to see once the the wider channels the millimeter wave are going to kick in so definitely stay tuned to the channel. Um, like I said, I've been off a few days just doing some uh, family stuff, family time. So leave all your comments in the comment section down below. I will break this down a bit further as we get into the in, into next year and, and seeing this grow more and more in other markets and cities. So if you're new to the channel, like, share, subscribe. Also follow all of the social media outlets for Tech Life. Hit the notification bell so you're notified when I upload content like this. And this is Tyrone with Tech Life, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.